A lot of people have been saying this should be a rollover. DB are going to try and make that not so. And I'm joined by Rel. Yeah, and DB Gaming UK, of course, this is, who've had a very late change. Uh, rated actually being replaced by Chaos um, going into this game. Yes. Things aren't looking great for them. Obviously, the chemistry is lacking there. But individually, they've got some very talented players in their lineup. The problem being here is that I don't want to put too much down on DB, but there are very few teams in Europe that you wouldn't predict Epsilon are 3-0. Yeah, it's going to be difficult for them. But of course, being the, the underdog and being uh, the least favorite to actually win can sometimes work in your favor because you don't have these high expectations. I mean, because there's so much pressure being put on Epsilon's shoulders, they're expected to just wipe the floor with DB Gaming UK. Uh, but DB Gaming UK kind of have nothing to lose. However, now on your screen, it's the man, the King Jerd. Mr. Does What He Wants Himself. There he is, Epsilon Jerd, in the new black jersey they're all sporting. Yeah, he does what he wants so much that he's actually playing under Toho for this game yeah just did. because he can and there we go the man recently switched over from tcm it's epsilon flux yep i said uh, the new, new jerseys are quite nice there we go the man himself swanny also known as the swan dog or the swan bomb swan bomb usually the swan bomb is when he drops 30 kills in a game and the game changer himself tommy any team he touches turns to gold. Sometimes teams are just referred to as Team Tommy because he's that good. Uh, a previous placement on Ghosts uh, with Vitality of second at the recent I-Series. Let's see what is going on now. And we're going to start off with Jerd. Yeah, see what he can do. Jerd picks up a kill there. And it does look like they're going to just try and put as many points on the board as quickly as possible. However, it's not going all their way at the moment. Well, this is it. We, of course, have Ant. Uh, it's going to be Nico take. Rob is going to be Nico take for DB, so just keep an eye out for him. And, of course, we've got ANT and Chaos, the replacement for rated there. Uh, let's see what they can do. Flux, though, as we said, almost a direct swap in a way uh, from TCM in that Mad Cat and Flux kind of swap places. They have now. Let's see what they can do. Flux is going to drop this, and he has managed to do that now. He's going to get in here. He has supported his teammates as well. Has this down. And you know what? Like I said, it's not going all their own way. They're actually losing. Yeah, so this isn't great for them at all, but uh, do not rule them out just yet. I mean, we're only a minute into this game, and of course, Epsilon, one of the most talented teams in Europe. But I feel like we're not giving DB enough credit at all. I mean, we've got Ant and Rob there. Uh, they are twins. They've been playing together from the from the get-go. I mean, every single event they've competed at, they've competed together. So the chemistry is there. Okay, still on board with Flux now. He's just, he's just running around and kind of having a good time, I think. They've actually got them in a triple cap right now, just trying to get the lead back, and they have actually got it as well. As Flux just comes in and takes another two. Epsilon dominating the kill feed. They're really not worried at the moment. Yeah, Flux doing work with that Bulldog. We are going to try and get the gameplay up for you guys as soon as possible, but we'll try and cover it as much as we can in this brief interlude here. Swanee is the play that we're going to be watching now. And just to kind of bring you up to speed on the points here, Epsilon currently leading 32 to 17, did temporarily have that three cap and it's uh it's actually db gaming uk now we've fallen behind after a, a quite good start yeah it is and i said it's gonna be one of these ones that unfortunately epsilon are, are that caliber of team where there's probably less than four teams you wouldn't call a 3-0 against yeah uh, well, here we go. Swanee actually going to that position that we saw Madcap playing in previously. And this is kind of that AR holding position. Uh, you just kind of sit back here. You've got these long, narrow alleys, and it's the precision of these players oh, that come into play. I'm sorry. We've got to go on board with Jared. 10 and 3 at the moment. He's just doing exactly what he wants, waiting for it, but does get taken down at the same time. Who is next in line? Yeah, Jerd, heavy objective player. Uh, we can see Swanee as well for his team is actually 6-1 to one doing work as well. On the flip side, though, for DB, um, you know, we've got, to, we've got to mention this, of course. Chaos, a very late pickup to this, has absolutely uh, no practice with the team. So he's really been thrown in at the deep end. So he is currently 1-7, to seven, but his poor performance can be attributed to that in some way. Yeah, let's jump on board with him, see what he can do. Chaos moving forward. Can he try and get off this one for seven? Looks like he's actually going to go round. He's, you know, he finished. He just ran through the middle of the map and didn't see a single person. Yeah, but uh, Epsilon there on the screen. Tommy, Swanee and Flux followed by Jerd as we move from left to right there. The all-star studded lineup. Uh, as we've talked about that, di uh, well, I suppose if anything, I said it was direct before, but more of an indirect swap between Flux and Madcat. Flux, a long serving member of TCM. That must have been a big move for him. Yeah, well, I said it, it, it's the first time in recent memory that TCM have even dropped a player. Yeah. And they've dropped him, and he's actually, in my opinion, just he's kind of brought him out of a rut, and he's now putting a lot more time in. He's, he, he's really coming to his own, and this team is just looking so, so good. Yep. Uh, 
we can see Jerd on the far uh, right there. Cool as a cucumber. And Swanee, it's always interesting watching him play. Sometimes he does get quite animated and frustrated when he does go down. Uh, but one of the most talented ARs in Europe at the moment. Uh, currently going 11 to 3 in this game. In terms of kill death ratios, he's definitely up there uh, as being the top performer. Tommy picks up another kill. So uh, we do apologize about the game screen not being displayed at the moment. So we're just going to keep bringing you up to speed on the scores. Currently 76 points to 43 in favor of Epsilon. So there is a significant lead there. 50 seconds left of this first round. We are speedily trying to get everything back up and running for both the spectators here at the tournament and all you guys back home. So please do bear with us as we try and close out this domination. Let's see what they can do. Is Tommy's trying to pick up another kill here. Now Jerd is going 48, 15 and 8 as he picks up another one here. They're just kind of... They are running around. It's not actually as one-sided as you would expect. Not sort of the Vitality game, we actually saw the domination horrifically one-sided. But at the same time, Epsilon and Dylan are really struggling either. Yeah, and we can see Ant and Rob there, the twins, probably in terms of kills, the top performers. Uh, Ainsy is doing the objective work, though. Four captures for him, and Chaos really slipping behind. No captures and two kills and 12 deaths. Yeah, was, there was, some, was that just some serious noise I just heard from Jerd there? Yes, uh, I, th I think it was a big grunt. Uh, but, uh, I mean, look at that score difference. We can see it. So 95 points to 56 is how the first round is going to close out. So we'll just make a quick note of that now. And, uh, of course, we will be going into the second side of this. So it's five minutes aside where these, the spawns are switched. And DB Gaming UK really struggling against Epsilon. Yeah, well, it's, it's kind of expected here. This is one of those games that we just you, you pen down as what you expect a 3-0, and if if it isn't a 3-0, it's an upset. Yeah, even even DB taking a map is an upset. But well, yeah, I mean, we saw before the Vitality Rise is an infamous theory game. The domination game actually closed off 166 points in Vitality Rise's favor, but then they only just won the Search and Destroy 6-5. Yeah. So when we compare the games of different teams together, uh, sometimes we do see this. Yeah, it's. It's interesting. Like I said sometimes you get strong S and D teams, and they, like because there's two S and Ds in the game, people do they? You only have to win one of the three respawns then. Yeah, uh, and that's why sometimes the the S and D warriors, as they're sometimes referred to, can sometimes excel at LAN events because two fifths of the actual best of five series, as you say, is search and destroy. Yeah, just waiting for this game to get back in here. Rel, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna guess that your prediction for this game is gonna be the same as a lot of people's. Yeah. Uh, so you know, you, you've got to. I, I think everyone would agree it's gonna be a three nil. But I, I don't want to doubt DB that much. I, I think we're giving them a bit of a hard time here. If I'm the, being honest. The, the, the problem is with this kind of game is that Epsilon would three zero pretty much anybody outside the top three. Well, this is it. I mean, in the qualifying stages to actually get to this point, they didn't drop a single map. Yes, they did. I've got that mixed up with a different team, haven't Yes, I? you have. They yes, did I drop have. two maps, but only their very last, I think second from last game against Orbit. Uh, I think what, I'm, what I meant to say was they won every game. Yes. That's what I meant to say. There we go, won they every the game. Full, they took the full 21 points. There's only there go, one team points. was able to take maps off them the entire way through the qualifier. Yeah, which is Orbit. Uh, but yeah, so on the actual run up to this position, what I meant to say was they didn't actually lose a, one of the series in the league play games. Uh, so I've just been completely dominating every team that they've gone up against. Orbit did put up the toughest fight, but the Orbit team that actually got that 3-2 loss against them didn't actually qualify to get here. No, that's the worst thing as well. Like some of them players are very good friends and they, Eps Epsilon knew that realistically if we beat these guys, they're out. They, Epsilon also at this point didn't have to do anything else to come first in their group. They were still they, going they first. Were, they yeah. Were, yeah, they were still going to come first but they were like, well, we can't throw the game. They played it fairly and yeah. you've got to respect that, sure. Um, but uh, as we say, very, very strong uh, going up to this. I mean, we do, we have done our research for this and we've just been going through all the placements of each individual player. And <laughs> while it's very Epsilon is a team that we actually had to remove the majority of the achievements that they had. Yeah, I mean, the, there was that many first place placements. I think we've got, I'd say, uh, just as a quick glance, about 12 first place placements just for Tommy. And that's not including the rest of, I'd say, let's just say the top three, five placements yeah. that he's got continuously throughout his whole time playing Call of Duty always at the top of his game. Yeah, like I said, it was one of the most, we, we put together all our research notes and we just thought like, well, we've got to cut out half of these. <laughs> yeah. It's like Tommy's current list is there. We've literally only got the first one because it takes up half a page. Yeah. It was, uh, it was crazy. And I mean, Jerd is probably the, the, uh, the, or the newcomer, if you like, to the yeah. team. But I think he's kind of washed that tag away. He's been involved for quite a good time now at a top level. Um, so you can't really call him that anymore. But um, in terms of the players that he's playing with now, I'd say he's probably the newest to the, uh, the premium level of Call of Duty in the competitive scene.
Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. It's kind of interesting how these new players are sort of coming up and bubbling through. I always like to see new players rise through the ranks and get in their teams. Um, I think we're going to see a big change of that, a big turnover this year. As we're starting to see people retire. Most notably, one of the analysts, uh, Mr. Mac, or Scott Brass, actually has retired only a few weeks ago. Yeah. And I said, this, okay, you're going to start seeing the change in the guard. And, uh, you know, you've, you've got to look at the players as well and think... Flux previously on the TCM, he was so close to qualifying last time for the Call of Duty Championships and narrowly Oh yeah, that, that is one player that is not even going to slightly take this anything but fully serious. Yeah, not at all. He doesn't want to blow that chance again. And uh, from what I recall, that was an incredibly close game. I think it was against the yeah, against so Rico. <laughs> going back way into that, I well, actually ended up casting that one last year. Flux, they actually outslayed uh, Farrakhan Dragons by about 40 it? kills, yeah. but lost by about four points through the hard points rotation. So Flux has tasted a bitter defeat before, but he is looking set to actually take this now as they are 1-0 up in this best of five series. Don't, they don't look like a team that's competing for a massive prize. Do they look how relaxed that team looks? Yeah, I mean, I saw Swanee, I like having a bit of a stretch there. I mean, it's getting a bit late. Um, <laughs> most teams would be fully focused there, fully concentrating at the screen, but they're very comfortable and very relaxed. And that's, you know, it could work in their favour. That's how they want to approach the game. It's working for them. Well, it is so far. We're just wondering what the delay is. I think there is a, a, a issue with one of the Xboxes. So we're just going to wait for that for just a few more minutes. Yeah. Um, but as we said, I mean, Tommy's uh, not shy of these top events. Obviously, he's competed previously. I believe he's attended every big international. This he is was it. telling me the other day. Even uh, GameSpot, he did the XP. He was at World Champs last year. And it looks like he's on course to go again from what we've seen so far. Yeah. Uh, would you say that Epsilon is a Team Tommy team? No. No, not no. at all. They all hold that. their own. I mean, this is the thing because each player... that. Tommy is sitting in, in amongst champions himself there. Yeah. So, uh, and of course, DB Gaming, let's show them some love as well. Uh, of course, they don't have the fan base or uh, recognition of the individual Epsilon players. But, um, you know, very strong within their own right. Ant and Rob, the, the duo, if you like, yes. that have been competing together for so they're long. Actually, they're actually pretty good. And they've kind of been surprising me. And I'm like, these guys could, we could be one of the guys that, you know, sort of start rotating into the top teams. Yeah. They Absolutely. have the potential to make it. And it, they just bounce off each other so well, and that only comes through playing together for so long. Uh, the fact that the twins and brothers obviously in the same yeah. house, I'm sure. They have uh, many Call of Duty-related conversations, but uh, there you go. So let's get into the Codcaster mode now and see if anything's going to change here. Of course, Epsilon do have that huge lead against Infamit, uh, sorry, against TB. Uh, of course, Rob is playing under the previous player, Infamous Theory, Nico Tick. So let's see what he's going to do with his Bulldog. Yeah, let's see what you do. This guy, I think he did, Flux is probably carrying the same thing. I'm just going to double check. Yeah, Flux, No, he's not. I mean, Flux is, is kind of known for using alternative guns, shall we say. Uh, it's it's his thing, I guess. But uh, this time is is sticking to the status quo. He's also the guy that started off this whole double nade uh, thing that's going on a lot in Domination. He just loves carrying those nades around. The Flux nade was the, the uh, term coined when he would just, you just see him throw out two and they both hit people. Yep. Uh, big plays from Flux in domination as a result of that. But here we go now watching Chaos as he does get shut down. Chaos, as we said before, did have a really rough first half on that first, uh, on this domination sovereign. He is now going to step on board with Angie on the sticks and see if he can do something. He goes and trying to contest, gets taken down at the same time. Now it's going to be Ant. What can he do as he's just trying to defend his own point? Now they are losing it. Is he going to come up against him? He does manage to take it down and hold it. Almost trying to get the two pieces. Teammate's going to clean that up one though. Yeah, well, they do only have one flag at the moment. And remember, they're against the heavy deficit at the moment. So they really do need to be pushing out for that two cap. And even if they're feeling greedy, go for the three cap, because that would really get them back into this game. It certainly wouldn't. They can, you know, we don't count anyone out yet. Lan is such an on the day game. And we can see both these teams are really going to be putting the effort in. I'm no doubt that DB have just been absolutely grinding especially when they knew who they were up against. Well, here's Jerd now, top control, actually switching back. They are just holding on to the two flag lead that they've got, and he is going to make the kill there. Long shot, but does get shut down as a result. It is, and I'm jumping on board with Swanee. Tommy's coming, uh, Tommy, actually, he's 5-0. And, oh, and he's actually going to run out of ammo, gets taken down by Ainsley before he can go any further. But it's now Kaz, they are trying to take B, they're trying to make a fight of this. There we go. He's just being, he does get taken down before he can do anything. Well, and they have actually lost that point now. It's a team of DB have an opportunity to get back in the lead. Yeah, and they really do need to hold on to this because if this falls into Epsilon control once again, I can't see them getting back into this game. There's just not going to be enough time. Uh, three minutes is not long at all. And there we go. Epsilon regain control of that B flag, <laughs> but immediately shut down by Ainsley. 
Angie managed to get the double nade off, but not before he got tagged himself. And now it's going to be... It's going to be Rob, I believe that is. Just trying to let's put some shots down. They're not giving up with a fight here. It's very admirable. They're, just, they're like, you know what? We know they're a good team. We're just going to battle them every single step of this way. Yep, and here we go, Rob advancing towards the middle. They are losing A though, and somebody really does need to prevent that going into Epsilon control. It has been neutralized, and this is bad, bad news. Rob trying to actually secure the beef like he is just about going to be able to neutralize it. He is now on board with Tommy's He's eight and three at the moment. He's just waited for that player to come right back round. Tommy now trying to push forward, trying to just going to... He should be able to just slip in here. Good support of his team as well. They should just fall straight back in Epsilon hands. There we go. Tommy now just... That back area isn't able to make a kill down there, so he's just going to hold his ground on the B flag. Fairly comfortable here. He's tucked himself away in the corner, and great foresight there to actually pick up the kill. Here's Tommy. Oh, he does actually not manage to get that one. Now they're all on it. Look at this. The fire going for the fast caption as they come in. As uh -oh. Jer just gets two, going to get the third coming around the corner. He's going to go for it now, and he oh, does. Jer. Just takes him down. Jer picking up the three piece of the time. Now to Tommy. Tommy's trying to push forward to support his teammate going in here. It's not running away with it, Epsilon, at the moment. DB has certainly given them a game. Yeah, I mean, the lead is definitely in the Federation team's favor. That, of course, being Epsilon. And when you stack that up against the previous lead they had in the first round, I can't see DB Gaming getting back into this domination now. No, me either. Jump running on board with the Jerd once again. Let's see what he can do, pushing forward. He looks like he's going to try and go for the triple cap. However, there could be two guys in here he needs to take on. Doesn't get them, though. He is going to be taken down, but Tommy is there to back him up. However, he is between a rock and a hard place. If he goes forward, he's going to come against the spawn. If he goes backwards, he's going to get shot. Yeah, Tommy was just poised there on the spawn of DB, uh, not pushing for the A flag. I think Epsilon are getting very comfortable now and may actually start to advance and just apply even further pressure onto DB, who are out of this game. They're not going to be able to win this domination. No, unfortunately, they're not. As Swanee tries to pick up another two kills, looking at 12 and 4 this side. Man, just doesn't need to die very often. But you know what, DB, it's not been as far-fetched as we thought it was going to be. DB are actually putting up an admiral game in themselves. Well, this is what, what I was saying. I don't think we've been showing them enough love uh, simply because of the accolades that Epsilon have, uh, you know, um, for, for each individual person on their team. I don't think we've, we've really recognized how good a team DB actually are. You've got to feel bad for them, the fact that they've had to have this late pickup of Chaos. But Chaos himself is a great player. Well, he's certainly doing a lot better this side. 10 and 12. That's not the worst score on his team. I'm sorry, no, wrong. Yeah, he's done well. Oh! oh. <laughs> Nearly. I tried Nearly. to go on a little bit of a tear. Tried to go on a little bit of a tear. Well, uh, the game is going to close off as Epsilon dominate and win in convincing fashion here. The first side, it was actually a 39-point difference. It's going to be very similar on this second side here as it finishes 93 to 60 in favor of Epsilon. Yeah, actually, just a little bit better than the last time. Well, a little bit worse, actually, than the last time. 95 to 56 was the first half. But it looked comfortable for Epsilon. It's kind of what we were expecting. S and D, where could, DB could kind of throw a little spanner in the works. If you remember, in the leagues, they actually took down TCM in the S D game. Really wrapped the TCM's cage. And this is it. And just relate to the previous game we saw, Vitality rises against Infamous Theory, despite a 166-point difference between those teams where Vitality took the win. They won by a single round on the Search and Destroy 6-5. So it's just a whole different ball game now. It most certainly is there. And we are going to be right back with map number two after this break.
Hello and welcome back to the European Championship Regionals. I am Rel and I'm joined here by Brycey as we conclude today. It is Epsilon going up against DB Gaming UK. 1-0 lead for Epsilon so far. Yeah, Epsilon looking very comfortable on that first domination. Going into the S&D, I'm going to predict pretty much the same story here. I think the game's going to be strong, but I'm not counting DB out of this one. We've seen strong S&D teams before. It's one of them games where, you know what, don't ever count a top team against an underdog because those are the most common maps dropped. Yeah, well, if there's one game type that I think DB Gaming are going to be able to take from Epsilon, it's definitely this. Uh, I'd say this is probably their strongest, but again, Epsilon are incredible at this anyway. Yeah. Uh, so, most could go the way. Are. Yeah. Uh, but the map uh, is actually going to be Sovereign that they're playing this on. So, we've already seen them on Domination Sovereign. Um, I, you know, I'm not sure how big a part that's actually going to play in this with it being, you know, the different game type. Yeah. But I do like Sovereign as a search and destroy map. Yeah, I, I actually really like Sovereign as a search and destroy map. The kind of dynamics on this map, I think, really suits it. And, you know, it's actually been quite a fan favorite. Yeah, so uh, due to the veto system, obviously, it removes the maps people dislike, and we see, we've see we seen this occurring yeah. uh, here and there. Well, I've, I've, I've had two triple maps for the first, and then I had the second one of those was, I think, triple freight and then do double octane, all the other way around. Well, there you go. I mean, the teams are getting the preferred maps, so both of them kind of agree. But it's actually, it's actually quite a diverse amount of maps we had. I was expecting to see the same maps just come up again and again and again, and it's not. Almost every team just has these these preferences. Yeah, well, this is it. I mean, different teams prefer different maps. Uh, sometimes there is a case where teams are, are strategically doing it so that not, they're not necessarily getting the maps that they want, but they're denying the other team from getting yeah. the maps that they want. So uh, that has come into play as well. Uh, but here we go, search and destroy. So, Bryce, you are taking the wheel here. Do we want to see the attackers over? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And it is going to be Jude that we're starting off with here. As we say, playing under Tohor's account. Let's see what he's able to do with his Emtar. Yeah, I'm uh, predicting quite a fast push into B. You know, I thought they were going to go A, actually. I thought they were just going to play a standard, but they're not. They're going to go straight for this one. Flux actually leading the path. I'm going to jump on board with that man. He's got the... Oh, he had the Bulldog. He just took it away. Yeah, and uh, a lot of people or a lot of the top competitive players actually say Flux is probably the most underrated top competitive player. I mean, he just kind of gets no recognition for what he's achieved. Oh, yeah, this guy's been in the top flight for so long now. And he's played with pretty much everybody you would consider a professional. And he, likes, he comes through. He just comes through when he needs to. There we go. Well, Jude does go down there. Tommy does pick up the kill and managing to defend that bomb site. Two versus two now. Tommy Swanee and uh, Chaos. And oh, look at that long shot from Tommy. One more. Come oh, round. Tommy. Sit down. Tommy picks up every single kill. He cleans DB up all by himself there. That was a brilliant play. And you can see he's chuffed with himself following this final kill up against Rob with that knife. Uh, a little bit of a celebration from him. Tommy is certainly a game changer, Brycey. That's where he got the nickname from, the game changer himself. And he does do a little bit of game changing there, but just picking up every single kill gets 4-0 and oh now. So we're going to actually jump on board with the attacking team. This time it's DB. There we go. So it's Ant now that we're watching. Uh, opting to use the Rampton, switching things up to Rob. His twin force. And there we go with a bulldog. He's gonna, oh, it's so interesting being able to use this Oracle mode and knowing how close they are to each other, but they have no idea. I said it done. He's just throwing those nades out. Nothing connected. No hit markers. His teammate would have called that one out. He's going in a challenge. He's been tagged up, but the bulldog kind of removes that problem because he can't drop someone in one shot. Oh, that's it. It's weak. Just, uh, spray and pray, as it were. If you're in close range against the bulldog. Bulldog, you're probably not going to win that gunfight. Yeah, the ability is just incredible. And just going to try and see what they can do with this one. They go, oh, oh she left. we said it was incredible, and obviously the other team had one as well. But it's now Ant, one versus three. There we go. Got to pull out all the stops for his team. Oh, oh look how close they are to seeing each other. around the edge there. And I don't know if either player particularly knew that each other was there, but um, they were just teetering across that door frame. And there we go. It is now 2-0 going towards Epsilon. So good start for those guys. Now, look at that flux. Just use it. He just went, I just got the first hit. Just going to completely wall bang you there. Shotgun, not so great at going through walls. And uh, Swanee not having much of an impact on this game. No kills, no to. deaths. Um, it's pretty much a three versus four going on here. Well, I think Swanee's usually quite passive when he plays. And at the moment, I think his teammates are just rushing ahead so fast. They're getting all the kills before Swanee can do anything. Yeah, and uh, as you say, Swanee is a, a passive player. He kind of holds points. He sits in positions. Um, he's known for just poking his head over a particular area, but his accuracy does allow him to pick up long-range kills. There's no Tommy. They're going for a very aggressive again. However, that nade has dropped Jerd. Uh, just being very careful here. They clearly just want to just win this one. 
get it done and then move on. Tommy is uh, just double checking. <laughs> nobody's riding it. Yeah, I was going to say paying particular attention to that bit of machinery flying above his head. Uh, maybe a little bit too much. Lux is going to put that bomb down as well. His advantage back in the hands of Epsilon. There we go. Oh, <laughs> Flux went, no, I'm not fine. I'm probably going to just miss that one. Are you trying to break that player out? Uh, quite possibly. I mean, I, I think there was there's somebody there, but he's just bobbing and weaving. Of course, he just has to run this time down. Oh, the player's oh. right next to him. It's, a it's bit of chaos mistake. versus... Oh, look at this. He's just trying to get away. Oh, chaos. You're in so much trouble. Oh, he's actually juked him. Oh. No way. Oh, he's he going to get away and get caught on the side there. Chaos coming in when he needs to. Oh, what a shame. That could have been really big from him. He knows that somebody is there. Oh, he tries again. He's going to get to Tommy Kill anyway. He's not going to defuse it, though. But I think he's going to be happy with what he did. The bait there was just fantastic. Yeah, it's going to be so frustrating, though, for Chaos. I mean, he knew that Tommy was there. He checked one way, he checked the other, and he was just hoping that he would poke out because he probably would have picked up that kill and then got the defuse. But it was not meant to be an Epsilon now on a 3 0 lead. No, it isn't. So we're actually going to jump on board with the attacking team once again. It's DB. And we're going to jump on board with Chaos. I really, I really like that bait there. He laid there, and obviously, he was worried about the fire coming in, but he just, he just stayed. He went. Someone's going to come through. I don't think he, he was actually intending to juke the player. Not at all. Well, Chaos now poised on that green room. Is going to have to breach through it at some point. Usually we see some early engagement in here, but none of the Epsilon players around the area. I think I'm not. There is one just the other side of this wall, though. And he's got, if he wants to go forward, he's got to go through that door. And who is that holding that door? Who's watching it? It's Swanee. Oh, it's going to come cannons. Oh, oh Jerd. And Tommy with the two piece at the same time. Jared, he just, he just looked at that when he just come through. It looked like he was shooting him, and then oh. Jared just wasn't there. Not the Bulldog. It was the MTAR that actually picked up the kill. I was going to say, I didn't think Jared was using that, but um, I don't know how uh, Jared actually managed to pull that off and how the uh, the DB player didn't manage to get All that kill. All of a sudden, kill. he just wasn't there. It wasn't yeah. there anymore in his gun side. Uh, but 4-0 is going to be the scoreline as we just go on to the attacking team once more. And uh, let's see what's going on with Swanee. I mean, we've said that he, he plays quite passively in the Search and Destroy games and uh, I suppose in the objective-based game modes as well. But he is making somewhat of an advance. Oh, there we go. Swanee, this guy, it's been an incredible AR for so long. Uh, I, it's, I imagine, it's like a second nature to him. Yeah, I imagine it being very <clears throat> frustrating playing against him. Uh, yeah, a lot of players say that. So how do we deal with Swanee? He gets into a place he likes and he can just move around a little bit and just keep getting them like cover. He's just the nightmare of this lodge. Oh, that has to be so frustrating for, for uh, ANC. I mean, you know, Swanee just sets up in these positions and the great positions, it's amazing play. Uh, very tactically minded and very patient as a player. Okay, that's now left in a one versus four. And he goes down before we can get to him. Yep, so it five is going to be 5-0. I mean, this is not looking good at all for DB Gaming UK. Uh, they're giving it the best. AMZ actually struggling to pick up any kills at all. 0-5, uh, to five. but um, Ant and Chaos do have three apiece. Yeah, I know, I know we've said that, that DB aren't having a great game, but people have got to forget that DB have already achieved more than so many teams oh, yeah. in the UK just by making it here. Well, that's exactly it. I mean, you know, these teams have been gone through the, the filtration process and uh, have, have earned their spot here at the UK, particularly a competitive category. So they've done a good job, DB. Oh, it's just Ainsley, he's up top now. He has an opportunity, he has got him stunned. Good going to challenge there two there, however, and he gets taken down by Tommy. And now let's jump on board with Rob. I'm up top with that board. Of. Could do some serious damage with it if he gets in the right situation. Player coming to challenge now, he's going to come around, he's just been sitting, he's going to come in, he's going to put loads of bullets down! Oh my Swanee goodness. still takes him. How on earth did that pick up, they not pick up the kill, and though is going to answer back and get one, but he's so weak now and he's going to go down as well, and that is going to be a 6-0 sweep there from Epsilon, and uh, I think that's the first 6-0 sweep I've actually seen today. <laughs> yeah, it is, I think we've seen a 6-1 six, six, twice. Yeah, yeah, so, but 6-0 first time, and it's going to be Epsilon against DB Gaming UK. And, um, you know, going into this blitz, Epsilon have got to be very confident. You can't really bet against them, not with the way they've been playing. Tommy there, 10 and 1, he went on the search and destroy. And let's see, just picking apart. Ainsy actually dropping 0 and 6. Yeah, and that's going to be really tough for him to take out of this. Um, Ainsy has been playing with Ant and Rob for a fair amount of time now. They've been practicing quite a bit together. And, you know, when you're at this stage and playing at this level, you want to get something out of the game, but uh, let alone kills. He didn't get a single point either. But he is going up against the best of the best. Uh, the four runners, the favourites to actually win yep. this tournament. Epsilon 
are proving their worth. They most certainly are. Join us for mat number three. It's Blitz. Will DB have an opportunity to get back into this game or not? Join us after the break. Here we go. It is the European Championship Regionals and what could possibly be the final game that we see this evening. It is Epsilon going up against DB Game UK. Epsilon currently in a 2-0 lead in this best of five series and fighting for their place to get that ticket to LA. Yeah, they certainly are. And at the moment, Epsilon have got to be feeling so, so confident. That 6-0, the first 6-0 in s we have actually seen all day. The Blitz score. So what do you think the Blitz score will be? Oh, boy. Uh, I mean, so what's the map? It's going to be on Octane. Uh, generally quite a high-scoring Blitz map, I would say. Uh, you know, DB Gaming, they're going to get something out of this. They're going to be able to breach past Epsilon, but I'm expecting maybe a net difference of about 10, 12. 10 to 12. I, in that's, I think that's, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll go around about that. Paul, Paul, I think more like 15. It kind of depends how they're going to set up. I imagine when they get them locked down in a strip club, Swanee will just be around Jeeps and Tank, oh, and then yeah. they're just going to try and relay them as hard as possible. Yeah. So I'm kind of seeing interest to see that, but Blitz is another one of those game types that occasionally you can just go the other way. Well, this is it. Swanee's going to be causing all kinds of problems for DB Game UK. He's going to be heavy defense, and he's just going to be rotating around the home Blitz point and uh, just shutting out anyone that's going for the push. Uh, aggressively for that team, you know, we're going to see Jerd pushing up very heavily, heavy objective player, and Flux following through. Uh, Tom is kind of going to be roaming Slayer, I guess. Yep. Um, on the flip side... With I think Flux is just going to try go for as many caps as he can. Yeah. He's, he's going to be... keep playing the objective and just keep going. Yeah, it's, uh, maybe there's some sort of little contest going here between Flux and Jude because I know that them two are going to be the heavy objective players. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that one there. Can DB pull something out of the bag, though? Can they really come back into this and just put their names on the map. If they're going to defeat Epsilon here, they will certainly make a name for themselves. Oh, absolutely. And it would be a massive comeback as well. Yeah. Because uh, 2 0 down, they've got to win each round back to back. We do sometimes see, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the tables turning at this blitz uh -huh. point, though, because if they win the blitz game, the momentum starts building and they can just take that forward into the domination and search and destroy that follow. But here we go anyway, as we say, possibly the final map that's going to be casted over and uh, streamed to you guys today before we go into the uh, the 13 remaining teams who will compete for the 15,000 euros tomorrow. And as we say, it is Epsilon, um, a lot of people's favorites going up against DB Gaming UK. It is now jumping on board with DB. First of all, it's going to be Rob. Let's see what he can do. They're going to be running heavy SMG. Yep. And, uh, Rob now going right down this right-hand side. Big, big push. He's wanting to make an early dent into the Epsilon wall as he goes right around the back. He does. And looks like he's just going to go straight for it. There but however, it looks, like, it looks like an instant base race. Look at the teams that just sort of gone for it, but he's instantly taken down. And Flux has already got two. He's actually going to be running the Bulldog. He's got the first point as well. Yeah, so uh, Flux getting straight into their base, causing all sorts of problems. And look at this play from Flux now. He's going to come, come up against pretty much all of the DB lineup. But with that Bulldog, oh, he maybe should have gone for the shot there. Obviously, the Reflex Knight did pay off for him. But there we go, Tommy trying to clean up two. 20, just an overwatch now, waiting for anybody to come out along this entire map. Sees one, goes back, sees another one, takes him as well. There is just nothing. There is no getting past one if he's happy where he is. And this is a, this is a, you know, this is the Swanee that we're talking about. He just finds these positions, gets the call points, and there's just nothing DB can do. I mean, he's uh, he's obscured his whole body really. There's there's no answer to that. There is, and they literally have to kind of come and have to take him off. And the problem is his team are just going to continuously back him up. There we go, kill after kill. And oh, he does get taken down? Uh, but looking at the actual score, it is only one capture in favour of Epsilon. It is, DB, they're going to try and push forward. 
And he's gonna have to do that. And they are actually gonna tie this. No! They just shut down before he could get in. Swanee there picks up the kill. <laughs> I can just hear Swanee roar. We've got soundproof boost in the building, but oh my goodness, can you still hear echoes of Callum Swan <laughs> coming through? Well, here we go now. Just holding back once again is Swanee. Uh, or doing that defensive work as he goes top motel. And you can see, I mean, Swanee, the way he's actually playing this, sure, he likes to find these positions where he can hold the cutoff points, but when he's on defense, he doesn't like to just sit in one position. He kind of roams around the home blitz point. He does now. It's currently 1-1. One, one. Epsilon are not having the great of flux. Managed to get that knife in. And they should be able to get another point on the board here. And it does look like that's, they are now swarming across it, but they are just being deflected here. They're not actually getting into the points. Yeah, well, there we go. Jerd does actually get one of his own. Uh, as we've said before, Jerd is playing on the Toho's account. And, uh, I mean, looking at the kills and deaths there, Flux certainly shining through with a double positive 8-4. to four. But apart from that, there's not all that much separating these two teams. I mean, even the scoreline, it's only one capture difference. It is now. Jed's going to try and go for it again. However, he's going to come up against three of this lineup. Oh. Just, oh, just dodged and went straight in. Yeah, Pat. Sometimes that's the wisest option, knowing that he probably won't be able to take out all three, just making sure he gets the point. Uh, I think we should see what's going on for DB Gaming, though. Give those guys a bit of love and see what Ant can do. Yes, yeah, on the sticks for this man, trying to push forward. He does get taken there almost instantaneously. Now it's on to Chaos, because he's going to come up against a player at the same time. Also drops Ainsy. Can he try and <laughs> unbreak this as he drops as well? And now Rob, Rob is going to go and score a point. It's still only one point in this. Although, for some reason, Epsilon look comfortable. They're not that far ahead. Yeah, uh, I mean, they did just get a point of their own there, but still only a two-point lead. It's nothing at all. And we can see Rob's actually doing some great work here. And he's just going to sneak right through the ranked. Oh! oh, and that knee slide didn't really seem to uh, get him anywhere as he does get shut down. Look, actually waiting at the moment. He's just going to go in for the respawn and gets that one as well. Now 7-3. Yeah, this lead's just extended now. Of course, we do have a further five minutes to play once the one minute 30 of this first half does end. So everything could change as we go into that. But Epsilon looking on form here. 8-3 now is the lead. It is now Flux going right around the back once again. He's going to wait for that respawn to come off. And he's probably just going to jump in it with an more time. Now 9-4. Yeah, and it's just like, uh, we're almost just counting up here, really, aren't we? It's just it's pretty much relaying these capture points one after another. And uh, it is, as we kind of said before, Flux and Jerd there. <laughs> actually aiming in with the shotgun, trying to get a headshot with it. Doesn't actually manage to. Now it's Jerd's turn. Jerd does come straight through him. However, it looks like a base race. Well, we said before, you know, it's going to be Flux and Jerd doing the objective-based work. And as we can see, it's those guys that have captured both, all 10 points so far for Epsilon. Uh, six to Jerd and four to Flux. And is now on board with Jerd. Let's see if we continue pushing forward. I think him and Flux are just trying to outscore each other at the moment. Yeah, I mean, this is their job, you know. It's up to Swanee and I suppose Tommy somewhat to actually be defending the home flag. So in terms of actually defense, there's not really much Jerd and Flux can do unless they're cutting people off and running head on into them. So they've just got to focus on getting the captures and leave the rest of the work to the teammates. I say, oh, now Flux is going to try and push forward himself. He's just being very cautious here. They don't really want to get too complacent, because if one of them suddenly disconnected halfway through a game and they lost it, I'm sure they would be so, so mad. Oh, Flux does make the kill there. You can see his challenge oh, almost gets the two-piece, potentially the three if he could have followed that up onto the third. But that is going to be the end of round one as it does end at 12 to 6. So I predicted an overall difference of 10 to 12, and they're pretty much on set to get that. That is the most relaxed I have seen a team all day. Yeah, and uh, considering what's at stake here, I, you know, they're in such a comfortable position. Not only do they have that two-map uh, two cushion, but even now in this third and uh, third game time, that essentially is going to decide whether they go or not. Or, well, could decide whether they don't go. Um, as you say, so, so relaxed. I think I was just trying to lip read a bit of Callum Swan there, and I think he goes, five minutes, let's just go, is what he just said to his teammates. I think he wants them to go as hard as possible for the last five minutes, just in case. Oh, well, that's it. You know, no messing about here. They want to That's, that's just one he's at. It's one he's always like that. Yeah, they just want to close this out. Uh, we've said before on the actual run-up to this event, they didn't actually lose a single game. They beat every single team they went up against, and they're probably going to try and continue that uh, throughout the entirety of this tournament. We are, there they go. Flux actually managed to drop him as well. And Adao is going to go through and try and get this one here. I'm surprised, I'm surprised we haven't seen the spawn trap on yet. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, not something that's been brought into play too much. We've seen Swanee on the cutoff on the other side on the first half of this. 
But uh, here we go with Lux, see what he can do. Um, and I really do actually want to see some of DB. I mean, we've seen a lot of Epsilon actually being streamed. So let's see if Chaos can do anything here. Despite being 5 to 11, he is at the top for his team with those four captures. He is. Let me get on board with Rob. Rob managed to pick up a kill. He's going to come through and he gets taken down as well. So I turn on the Angie. Angie drops as well. Now on to Ant. What can Ant do as he comes forward? Oh, spins round, and he isn't going to be able to pick up both of those kills. Did shut one down, but that is going to be yet another capture for Epsilon. It is now Nika. <laughs> uh, sorry, Rob actually pushing forward. Gets taken down at the same time. Now and his brother trying to push forward. Can he manage to get some points back on this? He's now at 15 to 7. Yep. Um, it's just looking less and less likely for them to actually get back into this game, but they are not giving up just yet, and they're getting the capture still. Seven points. I mean, when we were actually watching the Aware Tech game, there was a huge difference after the first side, and Aware really did bring it back, did eventually lose it, but the point being, it's certainly possible for a team to get back into a game when they switch over the side. Oh, it most certainly is. At the moment, I'm not really thinking that's going to happen. Well, admittedly, neither am I, but, you know, there is hope for them. It is still possible for them to do this. It is still mathematically possible, but they're going to have to find another gear. They're going to have to shift up and really start taking that Epsilon. Even Epsilon at the moment, you can kind of tell they're not playing their work the way they would against the top team. Well, they've got a relay set up, uh, which is great for DB, but the problem is Epsilon doing the exact same. So every single capture DB you get in, it's just becoming redundant as Epsilon get one of their own. Yeah, so now Tommy, you want to get a shot there, didn't actually manage to keep going forward. And Swan is on there at the same time. He's now 18 and 8. That's just ridiculous, the score putting up. We go back on board with Chaos. He's 540, but he's doing the capture work. So he's got six to his name. Two minutes, 18 left. Epsilon on eight points ahead. Well, this is it. I mean, the objective players are going to get a tough time because they're going up against these very defensive ARs. Uh, they are going heavily negative, but getting all the captures. You can see Chaos, six captures to his name on top of the leaderboard for his team. Yeah, he's got seventh capture there as well. I just want to point out this man's captures. 15 for yes. Jerd. So Jerd has just as many captures as he does kills. Yes, yes, he does. And he's literally just running. He has more captures by himself than the entire enemy team. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's quite something, really. And uh, there's another one to add to the list. So 16 kills, 16 captures. That's not bad going at all. It certainly is. He's continuing to move forward. Looks like he's just going to continue setting up. His teammates are set up. And this is the spawn trap I was talking about. They've got Swanee ready to lock them down. And they're just going to keep flooding down that side of the map. Keep going in here. And Joe's going to sit in and relay. That's incredible. I mean, he's just quite literally running to the base. Um, anyone that does get in his way, he's shutting down. But he's not coming up against much opposition because he's got Tommy doing a lot of slain work around him as well. Yeah, as well. It looks like Swanee. Is that, I think Swanee was going for a point then. No, Swanee's going back up top just to hold it down. 17 captures now for Jern, absolutely crazy. Uh, Swanny doesn't have a single one, but that is because of course he is just holding this top area, shutting down DB as they try and make their advances and putting up a very impressive 23 kills and only 10 deaths. Yeah, Swanny's going on Overwatch once again, looking to make a kill. Does get taken down from behind, now ball with Jern who cleans that up for his teammate. And it looks like they're going to go for another point here, they might even get to 30. Oh, Jerd, and there we go. He now has more captures than he does kills. 18 captures all by himself, which is just incredible. Yeah, it really is. Now, Jerd back once again. Trying to get on this point. He's actually been stunned, but his teammate is there. And then we go now, 28. Are they going to 30 bomb the captures? I don't think I've ever seen anyone in a competitive tournament, particularly of this level, get 20 captures before. All no, I don't, I don't think so either. No, but, um, you know, time is ticking away. I don't know if there's actually going to be time for that. Regardless, though, this is certainly going to be an Epsilon victory as we go into the final 10 seconds of this game. And we are going to see Flux get another capture. 30 captures going against 18, which, Brycey, I believe, is a 12 capture difference. Which is exactly what you said. It Congratulations, RL. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, so Big six... smiles from Epsilon there. Yeah, so uh, obviously they're, they're happy with it. A uh, little bit fatigued. It is quite late in the day. Well, I think they they knew themselves they were quite comfortably uh, comfortably going to win that game against DB Gaming. Yeah, they were. And there we go. That's going to be the last game of tonight. So over to the guys in the studio. Yes, we're still here, still sitting here. How do you feel with that? I mean, it went exactly as you guys predicted it. Any kind of standout moments that sort of caught your eyes? 
Um, probably Swanee in the first map. Uh, he went 26 and 9. He kind of locked down the whole map for the team. Played absolutely class, in my opinion. And Tommy went off in the second map. He went 10 and 1. And then Jord in the last map dropped 19 caps. So. What was your favourite moment? Did you have one? Um, Are you still awake during it? Yeah, no, not a favourite one. One of the one of the ones that will give a lot of stick for was Jared. He got um, turned on at one point. It was pretty horrible. Um, he, I reckon he, he might have a few nightmares about that one, but um, everyone on the stream saw it. So, um, But in standout moments, it was just consistent throughout, really. There was no real standout moments for me. Are you just... Do you, no comment. <laughs> no comment? You just came in here to sit on the comfy sofa, didn't you? Well, there you go. Um, I mean, how do you guys... Know? Obviously, like, Epsilon are now going to be going to Los Angeles. How do you think they're going to fare against, like, the best in the world? What do you reckon their chances are? Uh, they, they'll probably do the best, I think, out of all European teams. Or certainly, they've got the best chance. They've probably got the best team um, in Europe at the moment. So as long as, they, as long as they put the time in like they have been doing, I think they can definitely, if not win it, then really challenge for top spots. Yeah. I agree with Scott. I reckon they've got a really strong chance of, of placing in the money, um, quite high in the money as well. They're just such a great team. Um, but I mean, you've got you've got to think about hopefully co teams like Complexity will be qualifying. So it's going to be a tough one. Do you have anything to add at this stage? Um, as the two both said, like they're probably the best team in Europe in a minute. Well, on paper, obviously tomorrow we'll decide that. But yeah, they've got a good opportunity to go win a lot of money. So good luck to them. So, yes, well, I think that pretty much wraps it up for today. Don't forget to join us at 9 a.m. sharp tomorrow. We're going to be finding out who is going to be the best team in Europe, which is pretty spectacular. And they're going to be walking away each with one of these now quite poured <laughs> with, like, fingerprint trophies because we've all been pretending that we're great and awesome because we're never going to win them. So, yeah, don't forget to tune in then, and we will see you bright and early tomorrow.